Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. We are continuing on our way to Beagle Point, and our topic of discussion today is fighting with just about everything. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Let me go ahead and get through my intro for all the new faces who might be here. We're currently on a journey out to Beagle Point. We've already got, gone all the way through the center of the galaxy, way back over here, having visited Sagittarius A-Star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Started way back over here in the bubble where Earth and all of our human civilization is, and we're currently located right here on our way out to Beagle Point. However, the last several episodes have been in this single star system that we're in because we found a crazy amount of biology here. Uh, we found seven species on this planet, five species on this planet, and there's another four species on this planet. So this is where we're going to go and next. I'm not going to spend any more time because we already got uh, the we already got a decent amount of the species here. So let's get off this planet and head over to the next one. <coughs> so that we can uh, find the last few here and then start making our way towards the next destination. There's supposed to be four species on that next planet. Okay, I think I have my keybinds backwards. So we'll fix that here in a second. Waiting for the menu to become available. Menu, there we go. So I like to have my... Where is it? Flight miscellaneous. Here we go. I want frame shift drive to be. Oh, that is that one. I guess it automatically just did that then. Never mind. I wonder why it did that. Whatever. I'm a little bit confused, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Let's head over to our next planet that we're trying to get to. This guy right here. I guess we don't really need the super cruise assist. So we can just go straight for it. <clears throat> uh, for the new people, the purpose of this journey is to increase our exo biology rank up to the elite status, as well as make enough money to hopefully buy a fleet carrier, put all of our ships on it, uh, and, you know, maybe buy a few more ships and outfit them just to have all the kinds of ships that we want to bring with us. And then we'll head out into the bubble and, uh, you know, only come back when we really need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Struggling with some uh, congestion right now. Uh, so that's the plan for now. Uh, normally we would hop into systems and do some discovery scanning and some full spectrum system scanning and things like that. But uh, we have been in this system for the last two or three episodes, I think. So let's get that down. Get the surface scanner out. This one only needs two probes as well. So we'll pop those down there and we will wait for them to show up. So as I said, this, the topic of discussion for today is uh, fighting with everything. Oh my God. It's just something about my life and you know, I'm sure this is most people. It just feels like nothing ever just works. Any, nothing, nothing ever just works. You always have to fight and force it and make it happen. And it's so frustrating because it's just, there's, there's things that you want to get done and you're trying to be efficient with your time and you know you're trying to not break things and you're trying to just get things to work the way you want it but then you know it feels like life just goes out of its way to throw curveballs at you i feel i feel like i slowed down early enough that i shouldn't be slinging around the planet this way so do we have okay so it seems like for the tubus that we're looking for we're going to have to go towards the edge i was kind of trying to be in the middle of the <clears throat> Kind of trying to be in the middle of the uh, the sunshine area, but it just it doesn't want to cooperate. So I think we'll head over to this side since it seems like it's a little bit flatter, and then we can uh, try to find this tubus over here, and then go down into the more plains-like area. All right, cool. So we'll glide down there. So the reason I bring that up is, is that as I've stated multiple times over the last several episodes, we have recently moved back into my travel trailer. Uh, my wife and I have in anticipation of hopefully getting to the point where we can get some mobile income going and get on the road, maybe start a travel channel in addition to this one. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, really struggling with my congestion right now. I don't know why I'm so congested. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, we have this travel trailer. I've had it for a while. I, I've been wanting for a very long time to get on the road and go see the country and, you know, just kind of enjoy a different kind of lifestyle. I've never been a big fan of living in a house or living in an apartment or any of that stuff. 
Um, and I love the idea of having all of my stuff in a situation where I don't, well, and that's the other thing. The other thing is, is that I just, I can't stand moving. I've moved, I've had to move so many times in my life. And I mean the process of like moving an apartment or a house and all furniture and all that stuff. I've, I've had to move so many times. We moved a lot growing up and then I served as a Marine for 11 years and I moved a lot around then. <clears throat> and then after I got out of the Marine Corps, I had to try to, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why I'm really struggling with that. Uh, we had, I had to move around a lot trying to chase opportunities after I left the Marine Corps. Uh, you know, medical disability made it very hard to just do whatever, so I had to find what was available. And then, you know, ever since, and then I came back to San Diego and I've mostly been stationary, but, you know, it just, situations change and you have to be able to move around. So, I don't think there was any stratum on this planet. I think it was bacteria, tubus, tussock, and something else. I don't remember seeing stratum as an option. So, you know, it's just one of the big reasons I ended up deciding to settle on an RV is so that if I need to move from one area to another, there's not a big moving process that has to happen. All I have to do is just hook my trailer, close up my trailer, hook it up to the truck and, you know, head off to the next location. And that's that really appeals to me to be able to just go where I want to go without having to do <clears throat> crazy amounts of you know, packing everything up and uh, loading everything into a truck and moving a bunch of heavy furniture and just... I'm trying to make my life as easy as possible while still having the flexibility that I really want to have. So I, you know, I really like living in my travel trailer, but I bought my travel trailer on the premise that, you know, my kids were going to be here and I was going to be able to take them on a trip. So I bought a travel trailer that had uh, a bunk bed set up in the back. And, uh, you know, it was great when they were here, but then, you know, life situations changed and they ended up moving far away and I don't see them anymore. So, uh, you know, the bunk bed situation is pretty much not needed at this point, especially now that my, my daughter is about to turn 18 and my son is, a, you know, he's a teenager. So even if he does come to visit, He's not going to be sleeping in the bunk bed area because that was really designed for mostly small children. It's not, it's not, not really intended for you know adult-sized people. Uh, so we're deciding that we're, we, you know, we're in the process of trying to convert that area into a sort of walk-in closet kind of thing. And I took out the, I took out the bunk, the top bunk bed uh, yesterday because um, we're not ready. To, we're not we're not ready to actually convert it yet. We want to buy a, uh, a a washer dryer. Uh, combo unit kind of thing that we want to put in there and until we get that um, you know we're not really ready to fully go through and do the remodel of that area but I did want to take the top bunk out because I wanted to uh, I wanted to take the top bunk out because I wanted to set up an area where we could dry our clothes because I do have a little portable washer that has like a, a big drum and then a, a separate spinner it's one of those uh, it's one of those ones you can find on Amazon that are Hold on, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going here. Uh, I mean, I guess that way? I don't really know. We'll get back to our topic of discussion here in a second. Uh, I think that's all tubus. I'm hoping that once we get out into this more flat area, we'll start to see some of the other stuff. I'm starting to see some rocks and stuff, but uh, not looking for, not finding our, uh, trying to be a little bit careful because this could easily go very bad because I'm trying to cover a lot of ground because I know we ended up, oh, there we go. Alright, so I saw some stuff that looked like it could be some tussock or something like that. This is what we're looking for. <clears throat> if it would let me land. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, you know, we need to get a little... <coughs> Excuse me. We need to get a washer dryer. I need a cough button or something because sometimes I have days like this where it's just... Try to get to the part where we can scan this. Sometimes I have days where my, my congestion is just really bad and, you know... It won't go away. Tussock what? What was that? Tussock purpose something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But anyways, uh, like I keep trying, as I keep trying to get through, and I keep in getting interrupted by my own thoughts. Um, 
We want we need to buy a, a washer dry we, there's a washer dryer combo that we want to buy. It does washing and drying all in one unit, which is a good space saving thing. And uh, you know, it's it's relatively expensive and we need to save up the money for it. So we're not ready to, you know, fully convert that area yet, because until we get that, there's really no point. Um, but we want to turn it into sort of a walk-in closet slash laundry room area. And to do that, we need to remove the bunk bed stuff that was there. So I took out the, uh, I took out, I, I was tr doing my best to take out that top bunk without damaging anything. But the way they installed it made it so that the screws that I needed to take out were just at an angle that made it, taking the screws out without just demolishing everything pretty much impossible. Um, I did my best to try to do that, but in the end, I ended up ripping a massive gash in one of the walls because one of the screws got stuck and I couldn't get it out. And I didn't realize it was, um, I didn't realize it wasn't actually attached to a piece of wood inside. Oh, we're starting to get to some of the bacteria. I didn't realize it wasn't actually attached to a piece of wood inside. It was just attached to the flimsy uh, veneer coating that was on the outside. So I ended up uh, ripping a massive gash in the wall because I didn't realize that the screw was stuck in it. So, yeah. And I ended up cutting myself and doing a bunch of other stuff that just really got on my nerves. Well, it helps to turn on the night vision so I can actually see these. Uh, and just, you know, I went through a lot of frustration yesterday trying to get that stuff done because it's like everything in my life. Nothing can ever just work. Everything has to make me force it to happen rather than, you know, me coming up with a decent plan and my plan actually working. Now I realize, you know, I realize that everybody in the world goes through this. It just feels like everything that I do is like that. I try. I try really hard to come up with a all right, propagito. Propagito. Emerald. Okay. Interesting. So let's find the bacteria that we need. I don't remember what the fourth species was, but uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know that I want to run around and try to find it. I remember there were two species that were relatively rare, and I feel like we're probably going to have to go back up into space to find it, and it's not really worth the time to go do that. So we'll grab this back, these bacteria here, and then, um, let's see, where's the landing? There was some landing right here. There we go. We'll grab the bacteria off this planet and then we'll hop up into space and get a few jumps in because this is the last planet that we need to get here. Uh, it just feels like I, I do. I try. I, I used to be super, super impatient about everything and I would just go in and start doing things and, you know, hope for the best. As I get older, I don't have the patience for all of the problems that come up. So I do. I really try to sit down and approach a problem. I take several minutes to sit down and just think about how am I going to do this before I go and just jump in to do things. But even then, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't matter how much planning I do, I still feel like I go through all of the same problems that I've always had to go through because nothing can ever just like go the way I think it should go. And it's super frustrating. Um, I ended up destroying, I was trying to preserve that top bunk in case we ever wanted to maybe put it back in because, you know, um, plans change and you never know, things might, things might go in a way that we might need that bunk bed. Uh, but because of the way everything got stuck and because of the way that the RV installers decided to put everything in, in a way that made it impossible to just take it out as a modular item, uh, I ended up destroying most of it. And it's just, it's super frustrating when things go that way because you try, you know, I, I approach all of these projects with the assumption that I don't want to damage my RV. I don't want to damage anything. And it just, it just feels like every time I try to do that, it doesn't matter. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go through some struggle and we're going to, we're going to break some things. And it's, it's just so annoying. Okay. And this is annoying too, because I was trying really, there we go. I was trying really hard to get to where we could uh, quickly get this bacteria and then get up into space. And here we are again, wasting a bunch of time flying around, trying to find things that should just be right there. All right. Where are we going? So I, I tried, I tried, okay. Can we get off being stuck now? Thank you. I try to, uh, I do try very hard to not get on and be super negative and complaining and all that stuff. But every once in a while, I need to have one of these episodes where I can just vent out a bunch of stupid stuff that's happening in my life because, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to dump it on everybody on, on the personal people in my life. You guys don't know me really. And, 
<laughs> I can get on here and just talk about how stupid things can get sometimes. And, uh, you know, you can turn it off if it bothers you. And if it doesn't bother you and you're enjoying watching the gameplay, you can just focus on that part. And maybe some of you identify with that feeling of just feeling like uh, life is out to get you sometimes. <laughs> it's like it, it, sometimes it feels like there's just there's an unseen force out there going out of its way to just irritate you because it gets a kick out of watching you fr get frustrated over things and it's like can you just can you leave me alone why 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 do you have to be like that leave me alone let me let me let me live my life in peace please i don't know why it has to be so difficult but then at the same time i know there's a there's a there's also a philosophy of you know there's a lot of people that have it way worse than me and you could have it worse and blah 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 i know I know, but at the same time, you know, you, ju you judge your own life from where you are, not where other people are. And it's very difficult to, um, it's very difficult to truly get to a place where you can be, you know, 100% grateful with no, no feeling of what the F, uh, regardless of the fact that you know logically that your life is way better than, you know, a lot of people in the world. <clears throat> you judge your life based off of the position that you're at. It's like I've said before, and on many occasions, um, you know, every single person in the world is trying to climb the ladder. You know, no matter where you are on the ladder, you're trying to climb up. Um, if you're at the very bottom, well, you got a very long way to go. If you're at the if you're at the middle, then you know you're you're way higher than the people at the bottom, but you're still looking up that ladder trying to get up to the top. And even if you're at the top, you know, there's no such thing as the top. There's always an, it's, it's an, it's an unlimited ladder of, you know, trying to get to goals and, you know, <clears throat> you, when you get to the top of, when you get to the top of the ladder as it exists, when you have whatever goals you have, the, the ladder doesn't just stop. You, you, you extend the ladder. There's a, there's a new goal that you have to try to get to. So that's just <clears throat> anybody who says that, you know, you should be grateful for the things that you have and you shouldn't whine about this or that or the other thing. It's like, well, yeah, but at the same time, we're not designed that way. We're not built that way. Human beings don't work that way. We, all right, let's get the next system in the route set up. Can I? I was hoping that we weren't, we would not be obscured, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and get out of this planet and start heading off towards another one. Maybe we'll get two or three jumps in before we have to call it a day. Um, you know, it's just it's uh, it's it's I, I, I think it's slightly ignorant for someone to say, you know, just because a person has it better than someone else that we shouldn't we shouldn't have a desire for things to be better because human beings, regardless of whether you're religious or atheist or whatever it is that you are. I like I don't I don't want to get into religious arguments or thing, anything like that because you know politics and religions are not politics and religion are not topics I really want to get into because it's very divisive. But at the same time, um, regardless of your viewpoint on how the world works, I think we can all agree that human beings are never satisfied. It doesn't matter how much you have. You're always looking for something. You're always looking for whatever the next thing is. You know, even if you're not even if you're like me and you're not super interested in, you know, having crazy tons of crazy amounts of money and all you really want is to just have enough to live the kind of life that I want to live. Um, even if I get to that point, I'm not going to be satisfied. There'll be a new thing that I'm working towards because we as human beings always have a, a desire to push towards goals. And if it's when you have no more goals that you really start getting to the point where you're ready to die. Um, they say that when you retire, uh, you're much, you have a, in a, a What's the word I'm looking for? A, a really greatly increased chance of dying because now you don't have any reason to be here anymore. You know, you don't have anything that you're pushing towards. I don't want to work the rest of my life, but I always want to have something that I'm going towards because if you don't, you're going to end up, you know, you're going to end up having some issues. <laughs> you're, going end, you're going to struggle. You're, you're, you're going to, you're not going to have, it's, it's the will to push towards something that keeps us, uh, that keeps our bodies moving and, you know, working and being feeling like we're going to get somewhere and uh it's super important to have something to push towards goals are what make life work worth living because you feel like you're getting somewhere and sorry i'm i have a point that i'm trying geological too i have a point that i'm trying to get to but i'm also distracted by the fact that i'm trying to 
scan all these planets here, and it's kind of hard for me to do two things at the same time. Okay, we have a bunch of planets over here. I'm not really that... I'm, I mean, at this point, with all the biology we got in the last system, unless we find, like, some insane... Alright, I was, I was kind of hoping we would not find... <laughs> <laughs> kind of hope we wouldn't find anything here. I'd like to get a few jumps in before we uh, end the episode. Um, the drive to accomplish things is really what makes us uh, want to stay alive. Um, me personally, I I have this thought of like it would be nice if the the estimations that we have that we're gonna we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna continue extending life until we're at the point where we could pretty much live as long as we want, assuming we don't have a bad accident or something like that. But at some point, you're going to get to where you don't really have any goals that you care about anymore, and you're going to decide, you know what, I'm done with this existence. Let's uh, let's end it now and find something, and ho hopefully there's something better on the other side of death. Who knows? Um, so, you know, the point, uh, the, the reason I went on that long side trip there is to explain that there is a, there is a such a thing as... You know, regardless of where you are in your life, you're always you always have something that you're trying to push towards. And, you know, none of us are ever satisfied with anything. And yeah, you should have some gratitude if you're in a position. OK, that's one way to do it. You should have some gratitude if you're in a position where, um, you know, like especially for those of us in the United States and those of us who aren't living in poverty and who have been able to get to a place where, you know, we're living relatively comfortable lives. You know, there, we, we should have gratitude for that, but we shouldn't let, we shouldn't, we shouldn't assume that the fact that we have those things and that we have gratitude for those things makes it so that we should not have a desire for something more or something different or whatever, <clears throat> whatever it is that you have in your heart that you want to go after. It's not a bad thing to have goals and to have desires and dreams and all of that stuff. Uh, the fact that you have a life that's better than other people's does not negate um, your it does not negate it does, does not make you a bad person for wanting to for wanting something else or wanting something more or wanting to climb the ladder to the next level because everybody wants to climb the ladder to the next level every single person on this planet unless they they have some kind of mental condition is looking to go somewhere it might you know and their definition of moving up is not might not be the same as your definition of moving up like money is, you know, generally the standard by which we judge these things. But like for me, my, my idea of moving up in the world is not making more and more and more money. One, if, if I can get my channels, this channel, and maybe if we start a travel channel, if I can get that to the point where it's making enough money for me to live off of and I can keep it going, um, you know, as far as the money side of things, that's, a, that's pretty much as high as I want to go. Because if you want to make millions and millions of dollars, there's only a couple of ways to do that. You either work insane numbers of hours, you know, trying to work your way up and either starting your own business or maybe working for a company and spending so many hours doing it that they end up promoting you to maybe a CEO or something like that. Like most, like, don't get it twisted. I know a lot of people have a problem with rich people, but you have to understand that the majority of them, the vast majority of them, the ones who are in the million plus dollar, you know, income range those guys work 60 80 hours a week to be to be where they are they're spending their lives working and every once in a while they get to enjoy their money but that brings us to the other way of just like scamming people and you know that's another way you could make crazy amounts of money and there's a lot of those out there too but remember j just keep it in mind i know people i know there's a lot of people that hate rich people but it's like those people most of those people work really hard to have the amount of money that they have yeah, you know, let's be realistic about it. Most of them aren't out there trying to like rip people off and figure out ways to take money from people in a way that's unethical and think. No, there's. Oh. Yeah, but we're not gonna. Well, yeah, we should stop there because uh, we're at 25 minutes and we need to get out. Of, we need to get on a planet. Uh, we'll do that one since it's two. Uh, one more. There's one more behind the star, but uh, unfortunately, I don't want to take the time for that. So let's go ahead and move on to this guy here. Get ourselves locked in on him. And uh, I think I'm going to put a cut in here so that we can uh, reduce the amount of time it's going to take us to get to there. So I'll see you guys in just a second. 
All right, we are approaching the planet. We'll go ahead and get our scan in, and uh, then we'll go down and hopefully find something interesting. There was only two on this planet, so ideally it's going to be another Stratum Tectonicus, but then again, it's an ice planet, so it's probably going to be Fonticula. So that's that's fine. We haven't seen some Fonticula in a while. Oops, how did I get out of the... There we go. Uh, let's see. We need six probes, so we'll go to the back of the planet, the top of the planet, left and right, and then the bottom, and then the closest part, so that they all hit at about the same time, and now we just got to wait for that. So I realized I kind of went off on a tangent. Uh, the, the the episode was, or the topic of discussion was supposed to be primarily about just all of the kind of craziness that I've, or I don't say craziness, just the BS that I've had to go through in the last day or two, yeah, Fonticula, uh, uh, since yesterday. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm self-aware enough to realize that the drama that I had to put up with isn't really much compared to, you know, some of the war stuff that's going on or the people who live in poverty and can't figure out a way to get out of it and you know there's there's a lot of why why unnecessary okay we're gonna try to get down into this crater here um you know i realize i'm self-aware enough to know that my complaints being heard by a lot of people are going to be like, well, at least you're not starving. I, I know. I'm aware. But I think that, you know, I think it's important for all of us to recognize that while that is true, while that is true, while I definitely have it better than everybody else, nobody ever truly looks at the world through the eyes of other people. We're always looking at the world through the eyes of where we are right now and where we would like to be. And I don't think that's unreasonable. I think it's perfectly reasonable to see the world that way because we're all individuals. We're all people who have our own individual desires and dreams and goals and all that kind of stuff. And it's not, it's not wrong to feel that way about your life. And it's not wrong to make decisions that are, you know, primarily geared towards getting you where you want to go. Uh, I was hoping I could land here. But, uh... Doesn't seem like we're gonna be able to, so... Oh, I thought I saw a spot. I saw it turn blue for... Oh, right there. Uh, uh, you said it was good. Don't tell me it's good and then take it away. Oh, come on. It said it was good and then it just <laughs> changed its mind on me. That is so annoying. Come on, give it to me. It told me it was good for like two seconds. They they really I really wish that we <laughs> they need to they need to in, they need to uh, come up with a uh, a repelling option because this is ridiculous. I shouldn't have to fight terrain this way. The ship should be able to just hover there and I can repel down on a on a on a high high strength rope or something. It's like ridiculous. I think I might be able to land here. Okay, here we go. So we'll scan in the next episode because it's going to take too much. It's going to take too much time to do all of this. So uh, we'll go ahead and call in an episode. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and it will uh, and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join the button. Check out the list of options available there. Decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a continuing commitment, you can leave YouTube's form of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions such as these are greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this into a full-time gig, which is the dream, as we've been discussing. So again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys have been enjoying this journey. Hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to sell off all of our information and buy a fleet carrier. But until then, I'll see you for the next one.